We all love taking a lot of photos and videos in the field, but that also leaves us with the challenge of managing an ever-growing archive. So how can we store our files so they are easily accessible, but also safe so that we never lose any of our precious files? Hi guys, I know archiving your images and making sure they are safe is not the sexiest topic, but it's a very important one. And developing a good system of archiving your images and making sure they are safe early on helps you a lot down the track when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of images like I do. That's what I want to know from you in the comments. How do you sort your images? Are you using folders? Are you using a catalog like Lightroom with keywords? Please let me know in the comments. I'd really like to get some of your ideas and see how you're dealing with your images. Also, are you on top of your file safety? It's so important that you are. If you're only having one copy of your images, you're really playing with fire and you want to watch to the end of this video to see how you can make sure that you never lose any of your images and create enough copies so that you're safe. So how do I archive my images? I've never been the biggest fan of Lightroom simply because I didn't really need the catalog feature and I felt like keywords and that catalog that it creates that takes up so much space on your hard drive wasn't what I personally needed. On my website, I have my archive structured in a way that follows the IOC bird list of all the birds in the world. So in that list, it has all the birds in the world structured by family, then species, and then subspecies. And this is exactly the same system I'm using for all my images. And I have three archives. I have a raw archive, I have a video archive, and I have an edited archive where all my edited PSD defaults go into. And all those three archives follow the identical folder structure. So I have one main folder that has all the families that are photographed in it. If I click on a certain family, it has all the species in that family in it. And if I click on a species, it will either have all the files of that species in there, or we'll have another folder in there with each of the individual subspecies that are photographed of a certain species. Structuring it that way allows me to really quickly get a really nice overview of all the images that I've taken of a certain species or subspecies, so that it's very easy to find the files and to work with the files. And I'm also getting a good idea if I ever accumulate too many files of a certain species in one folder, because I will simply see there's a lot of images in that folder and I might delete the worst ones. When it comes to the editing archive, I have a little bit different structure in there when it comes to the actual individual species. So if I click on a certain species, I will have all my edited files of that certain species in that folder. And then I have another folder called JPEG in there where I save all the JPEGs and my web files. So I think it's very important that you find a system that works for you, whether that's Lightroom with a catalog function or a folder system like I use, it doesn't really matter in the end. What's important is that you find a system and that you can follow that system and that it's easy for you to find your files and also that that system allows you to easily back up your files so you can never lose any of your files. So what does my workflow look like when I come home to the computer? I'm using a desktop computer and the great advantage I have in there is that I can use multiple hard drives to perform different tasks for me. I have two large traditional spinning drives, one for my raw archive and video archive and one for my PSD archive. And then I have two SSD really fast smaller hard drives in there that I use for temporary files and the files that I'm working on. Why do I have these SSD hard drives? Simply because they make working with the files much faster and if I'm editing photos in Photoshop for instance, it's just a better and faster experience. So what I'm doing when I come home, I plug my card into the card reader and download all the raw files and videos I've taken on that certain day onto my working SSD drive. So on that drive, I then open Fast on Image Viewer, quickly click through all the photos and videos, delete the ones that I don't want. Then I copy all the files from the working drive onto my archive drive and add them to the individual species wherever they need to go. When it comes to my working drive and my PSD files, I'm doing it in a very similar way. So if I open one raw file to be edited, it opens up in Photoshop. And then when I'm editing the file there, I'm saving that file onto a separate fast SSD working drive for my PSD files. Doing it that way allows me to 
utilize the faster speed of the SSD hard drive when looking through my images and also when I'm starting to work from these images or edit some of these images I'm also getting a speed advantage. And it also gives me a good overview of what files still need to be archived. So now that I've moved the files from my working drives into my archive, am I done? Are my files safe now? Not at all. Unless you don't mind running the risk of losing all your files, I would highly recommend that you look into file safety and have at least three different copies of your files. Even if you have a copy on your computer and then a copy on an external hard drive, personally I think that's still not enough, especially if the hard drive sits right next to your computer because there could be a break in someone sealing your computer and your hard drive. You could pour some water over the computer by accident. There could be a small fire destroying your files and the hard drives. So this is something that you don't want to do. You have to have at least three different copies of your files to have full file safety. So you have one copy on your computer or your first hard drive. You have a second hard drive that backs up all these files and then you have a third set of hard drives that is stored at an off-site location and that you rotate from time to time with another hard drive so that you always have a full copy of your files stored somewhere else. You could also do this through a cloud service, but for me that doesn't work. My internet is too slow and there's a volume limit, so it would take me over a year to upload all my files to a cloud provider, so that doesn't work. And secondly, I'm not sure how I feel about uploading all my files, which is basically my livelihood, to some sort of internet provider. So for many years I've been using these USB 3 external hard drives but as you can see over time you accumulate more and more and more of them. While my archive was small this worked pretty well if there was only one or two little hard drives that I plugged in from time to time to back up all my data that worked perfectly fine but with my ever-growing archive this system just didn't work anymore at all. So I've been looking around to find a solution that can act as my main backup so all the files from this computer will be backed up right onto there and then backed up onto a third group of hard drives that will act as my external backup. So I've been looking around and I found something that is called a network attached storage device and that allowed me to remove all these hard drives and bring on the NAS. So this small box contains four 14 terabyte hard drives that are put together in a RAID system so that they all act as one big hard drive. And if you were just running all these four drives as individual hard drives, you still run the risk that you lose all your data if one of the drives fails. So I'm running them in a RAID system that allows me to have one or even two drives fail depending on which drive is the second drive that fails. So the NAS actually attaches to your internet modem and because it attaches right to that you can access it from your computer but you can even access it on the road when you're traveling if you need to send some files to someone or you want to upload the files from you on the road onto your NAS or you can even give access to other people for instance if someone helps me with editing some photos or some videos. There are a few different companies offering NAS solutions but when I did my research I came across a company called Asusta that seemed to offer exactly what I wanted at a reasonable price and also claimed to be very easy to be set up and also has a lot of apps that you can run on here that allow you to sync your files from everywhere and back up your files automatically whenever you want onto the NAS system. So that really appealed to me and they were able to help me get my hands onto this AS5304T Nimbusto NAS. It has four bays as you can see here in the front where you can just slide in your hard drives. It's pretty much plug and play and this is really what has positively surprised me with this system once it got here. I was afraid beforehand that I might not be able to set it up properly or that it's really complicated but this was literally plug and play. I put in the hard drives, I plugged it into my modem, I brought up the software on the computer and that guy, the setup wizard, basically got me through the whole process really easily with no headaches at all and once installed, I had to set up my RAID system, which took about two days because I have 56 terabytes worth of hard drives in there. So initializing that took a bit of time, but after that I could map the NAS as a hard drive in Windows. And now it just sits in my Explorer, just like all my other hard drives. And I can simply access it and use it 
just as any other hard drive. I told you before that I have a two drive redundancy in here. So out of the four drives, I can actually only use two for storage and two are basically used for security. That means my 56 terabytes only become like 28 terabytes of usable space, but I'm happy to have that redundancy because setting up this NAS, transferring all my files over takes a fair bit of time. So I would really hate for one hard drive to break and I had to do it all again. Whereas now if a hard drive breaks, I should be able to pull it out, put a new one in and it will back it up and is ready to go again. And I will never lose access to the drive because it can function even with just three drives in there. So this is something that I wanted as my main backup because now I can really rely on it. And I can even store some files on here that I don't want to have on my computer, like big files, like my master class. There's over one terabyte worth of 4K footage that I don't need to access every day. So I moved that off my computer to have some more space here and it only sits on my NAS and my third copy. And because I can trust the NAS with the redundancy drives in there, I can trust that I won't lose my data and I can clean up some of the files that I don't access much from my computer. So I've had this NAS for about two months now and I've been really happy with it. My network is only one gigabyte, so I'm getting about 115 megabytes per second. So transferring large amounts of files takes a little bit of time, but most of that happens in the background. So that's not really a problem. And even some of the files that I only have on here that I want to exit from my computer, it's definitely fast enough. For videos, I might have to transfer them onto my working drives, but for photos, it's definitely fast enough and I can directly access the photos on here, open them up in Photoshop and edit them without problems. So that has been really good. And overall, I've been really positively surprised by this system of how easy it was to install and just how many really nice and helpful apps there are. Because once you install this system, you have a nice user interface up there with lots of different apps that you can download and update and just find one for all your needs. I use the NAS just for file safety and storage, but a lot of people also use it as like a multimedia server, for instance. So this is a really nice system and I'm really happy with it as my main backup solution because now it's all in one place, it's secure, there's redundancy with a few drives in there that can fail without me losing all the data. And I feel like I'm in a much better and much cleaner situation now because I could replace all that stack of hard drives with one nice looking small box that sits next to my internet modem and I can just access it from my computer or even when I'm on the road. So what does my 321 backup and file safety workflow look like now? I've most of my files and all important files on my computer as the first kind of copy. Then I back up all the files onto my NAS system that has all files and it's automatically backed up onto there. And even my two working SSD drives are also backed up onto here automatically on a separate folder because sometimes I'm leaving files for extended periods of time onto my working drives and I don't want to run the risk that I lose any of those files. So they get backed up onto here, but once I move them on my computer, they will be moved on here automatically as well. And then I'm having my third copy that doesn't live in my house. So this is one part of the copy, two 14 terabyte drives. And there's another set of two 14 terabyte drives that live at an offline location or offsite location. So whenever I go to that offsite location, I will update these drives manually beforehand, take them with me, swap them out with the drives at the offsite location. And once I bring the old drives from the offsite location here, I will update them. Next time I visit, I will go back and swap those drives out again. So I have a rotating set of drives that lives offside. So whenever something happens to this house, I hope it doesn't, but you never know, these drives will be unaffected by it because they are somewhere else far away from here and I don't run the risk of ever losing all my files. So this gives me really good file security and access to my files as well. I have most files on the computer where they are really easily accessed and it's nice and fast to work with them. Then I have all my files on the NAS system where they can also be easily accessed. And then I have a third copy of files where one set lives here and the other set lives at an offsite location. So I will never ever run the risk of losing all my files. 
So typically I back up my files daily onto the NAS and then every few days manually onto these two hard drives and the working drives are back up basically simultaneously with the files coming onto the computer just to make sure that I don't lose any files in transition or just after I downloaded them. You might not need the NAS system yet because your archive isn't big enough, but I can highly recommend it. It's just so much cleaner, so much nicer to use, and you don't have to use 14 terabyte drives in there either. You can just use smaller drives like four or two terabyte drives even to just have that one nice system that gives you some security, better access and more storage if you need it in the future. Don't wait until it's too late when it comes to file safety. Make sure you have a great archival system and also a fantastic backup system that makes sure that you never lose any of your precious files. Because I really don't want you to be in a situation where you feel like you may have lost all the pictures you've taken in the last few years that would really be devastating. What system are you currently using? Are you having none, one, two, three drives? Let me know in the comments. Are you having a drive that lives at an off-site location to make sure that even if something happens to your house, nothing happens to your files? Let me know. Also let me know, are you using a folder system? Are you using a catalog? Are you using keywords? Are you using Lightroom for your archival system? Let me know, I would really like to have a discussion about it and see what everyone else is using. So please let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up for this video, I really appreciate that. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on there. If you also want to learn more about bird photography, make sure to check out my ebooks and videos down there in the description. And I will see you in one of my next videos. Bye!